Welcome Survivor to some 7 days to die and today we will be looking at what I think are the top 5 weapons in 7 days to die Alpha 19 and no no I'm not talking about a lightsaber or a blaster from Star Wars or something I'm talking about real weapons that you have accessible to yourself in your gameplay in 7 days to die and of course it's fairly controversial which weapons are the best ones because there are some good ones there are some bad ones and it really often depends on your play style but these are going to be the ones i think are really something to take a look at when you're playing at least if really suits my play style and if you have any other favorite ones make sure you leave it in the comment section below the video and the first i'm going to look at is just a regular pistol now you can find this usually fairly early in the game I and mean, people have been finding this in the first couple of days of playing the game and if nothing else you can often buy it at the trader as well now it's using the regular nine millimeter ammo which is really really plentiful it's in alpha 19 it's almost too too abundant i feel that if i don't use my nine millimeter weapon when i go into a pui when i come out of it i got tons of extra up to an extra half or a serious stack of uh, of ammo which is just maybe a little bit too much but it's really good it has a fairly good uh, damage it's equivalent to sort of what the bow has it has a okay magazine size at 60 not too bad and you can shoot it fairly quickly just shooting now while it might not kill a zombie in one hit two or three shots regular ones will normally at least do in the regular zombie but where it really shines is even as you start heading into mid and late game we start to mod it out now this is a q6 pistol which does 79 whooping damage it has 23 magazine size and it's silenced which is really really good when you're going into clear well clear various pis especially at night and why is it so good while well, i'm in here in a pi there are no lights around and you see my uh, sneak is down to five which is really good of course normally when you shoot them something everything else will wake up but if you have a pistol which has a lot of damage and silencer times four damage you can do really really good damage to a lot of the zombies especially if you're just headshotting them so you can pretty much just sneak around and shoot them in the head and as long as you don't wake everything up you're quite good at oh quiet see even irradiated ones now you don't have to be a little bit careful if when you're being a very noisy as i am you see now i'm being a bit noisy now there's some light here uh, which of course also means that zombies can see a bit easier but it's really good for just sneaking around and just shooting them in the head so i would say early game this one is really really good because it's accessible late game will a silencer it can do massive damage you know 79 that's really good damage put on some hollow points what i'm using just now and you have even more damage as well which means it works late game as well. You end up having a lot of 9mm ammo, ammo, just tag them, shoot them, nighttime, daytime, whatever. Can't go wrong with the pistol. Coming in at number 4 is the auto shotgun. And I always liked shotguns in general. Now shotguns have a bit of a problem in that they only have about 8 ammo. So that's fairly uh, fairly restrictive when you're being faced with a lot of zombies but auto shotgun does away with that whole issue by having up to 33 ammo magazine size if you put on the drum roll as well the drum magazine mod once it's been kitted out it says it does 21 damage per pellet then you might be thinking that's not a lot no no it's 21 per pellet and there are 10 pellets so you can shoot fairly fast like this and you can generally take out a pui or a small horde as you start fighting without having to continually reload and that's super super useful now you don't find this weapon early on in the game but once you do find it i mean look at the amount of destruction that this one gives taking out these 25 strippers i mean it's just awesome for that and i haven't had to reload a single time of course i don't know if i missed that one it didn't even take the whole magazine because it deals so much damage when it's been outfitted properly with a bunch of mods i sort of like uh, 
the mods I like, yeah, I like to have the red remover. It's always good. Crippleum can also be useful. Of course, the draw magazine and maybe the reflex sight because uh, it just looks cool if nothing else. I don't necessarily go ADS with it all the time anyway, so something else would work as well. But if, maybe fall grip. But it's just it deals so much damage and the magazine size just as oh, I just love it. I know, especially for people who are clearing POIs, this is really, really, really powerful because, okay, can I come in? This is the wrong way. Because you walk in, there's a zombie, shoot off their head, continue walking. Oh, here's some, uh, there you go, some radiated, bam, dead. And you don't really get into a lot of trouble with this one as long as you're fairly accurate with your shooting. Another one, dead, another one, dead, you get that headshot. Look at that, you know, 200 damage in the head. Very few zombies can actually withstand that. And I'm, I'm not in god mode as you can tell. And I can easily take out a bunch of zombies and I still have a bunch of rounds in the magazine, which means that I don't have any problems with being overwhelmed on slowly reloading and trying to get my ammo back. And that's really, really useful when you're clearing big PIs because reloading is what's going to be killing you. See, even more, even more. Just take them out. Massive damage with a big magazine capacity is really, really useful. So, some people don't love... Well, that uh, flag was uh, sort of spooking me. Some people don't like this shotgun because they feel that it's really restrictive, but I really, really love it myself. So I would definitely put this as a very strong contender for a top five. Oh, another one. Oh, oh they're nearly dead. But it does make a lot of noise, as you can tell. <laughs> Look at all the zombies are coming in. Oh, they all hear that I'm around and they want to taste my little shotgun. And even better... Oh, let me just uh, freeze them for a moment. If you want to, you can put on the shotgun slugs as well. Shotgun, shotgun slugs will increase your your range as well. Uh, you'll have... Why does it say two? Am I using the wrong... Oh, breaching line! Wrong one! Oh, shotgun! Oh, that was... Uh, actually, I talked about this one. I'm not talking about the breaching. Well, actually, let's talk about the breaching as well since we're here. Nice thing with the breaching is that you see this one? 10,000. Oh, almost 10,000. Shoot a few times. And there you go. Now you can loot it. And if you want to go for the AP slugs, okay, make sure I get the correct ones. Now all of a sudden you are up to 9 range, which is up from the 5 and really, really nice damage as well. Really, really powerful. Oh, I love it. This is a really versatile versatile a weapon to bring with him when you are going and do your loot runs and of course it's really good during blood wound halts as well so i would say strong number four well, number three is well we're here at chuck and messiah if you remember my previous video about a week ago i was covering grenades and number three i would say it's the pipe bomb now pipe bomb of course is not a regular shooting weapon or anything but it's really powerful so i'm uh, just gonna light one here i'm gonna drop it here at their feet and let's see what happens look at that almost ten thousand experience and let's see how many survived one survived with 29 hit points i can probably punch her in the head and take her out there you go look at that and this was one pipe bomb now of course i have skilled up in my explosive and everything but they do massive damage one of them deals 230 damage for a four explosion radius and saw it covered all these 25 really easily even better is that pipe bombs are really, really easy to make in quantities. All you need is plant fibers, which, you know, we know that's really easy. Short iron pipes, you just pump them out in the forge. And gunpowder. 12 gunpowder and I kill 20 for zombies now you don't get a better bang for the buck here when it comes to killing zombies and not wasting resources because they're really really powerful when you have properly specced into demolition expert as i have they deal an extra 50 percent damage so they're not dealing 230 as you can see they're dealing 345 damage. And that's super powerful. Not necessarily when you're clearing POIs. They can be in some situations. But where they really shine is when you are out at your Blood Moon Hordes. Because 
that's where you can really get the zombies into one position so let's get a bunch of zombies in here i showed this last time all right let's enable the ai here i showed that last time in my video about how easy it is to okay come on all of you ladies come in here i know you want to be here yeah, yeah, yeah i guess all don't want to be here come on no no you really want to Come on, faster you can go. So whether you have a kill pit like this or whether you just have an area where you're stunning them. Oh, come on. Why are you doing that stuck there? What you do is basically make sure you have a bunch of zombies in one area. Get a pipe bomb. Oh, why not get two? Oh, three. Oh, four. And you can take out a bunch of zombies. And these are feral ones. These are not just the regular ones. And see, there you go. Four of them. And I've taken out... Well, seems it's 24 again because this one seems like it wants to be stuck there. I think that should take her out though. Oh, there you go. So 25 of them taken out <laughs> with just a few, a handful of pipe bombs. It's a really, really effective way of using your resources. Now, it is, of course, only if you are in a defensive position where you can get the zombies grouped up. And that's usually during the hordes, maybe wandering hordes. But sometimes when you're doing clearing pre ice as well, you can do that. Oh, I really love them. Because of their power and because they're easy to mass produce, I use these ones from the beginning as soon as I can craft them up until late game because they're much easier to use than oh, well, pumping out than you want to have 100 grenades going to take you a lot of mechanical parts but these one, hundreds and hundreds of them takes very little resources. I really, really love them. And at number two, we have the M60 light machine gun. Now, this is probably something that people would be wondering why I wasn't including it. And it's definitely included. So let's see if I can get all these zombies over here. They have it spread out a little bit. They are not that interested in me, perhaps. But the really nice thing about the M60 is... Oh, let's go look at the... Oh, can I? Yeah, stop. Please stop, ladies. It has a fairly good damage as well once you have kitted it out. But the magazine size, oh, the magazine size, 122. I mean, when it comes to a handheld weapon, except for the junk chart, which obviously is, um, you know, it's not really meant for being held and shot. It has the highest magazine capacity of all the weapons. And of course, it looks really awesome as well. I wish you could you could stab them with it. I mean, look at that, uh, that bayonet in the front. I mean, you should be able to just stab them in the face as well. Of course, that's not really stabbing. That's a... Uh, that's shooting uh, but <laughs> it's really really awesome because with a high magazine size let's see if i can get rid of her as well because she's in the way you can mow down a really nice horde you see they don't even know where i am just mowing them down look at that experience as i'm just tearing through i think it was about 50 of these zombies and of course i'm missing a lot of shots now because they're so spread out hey, hey people i'm here come on you you, you guys don't want me no, you want me. Come on. I, I I don't smell. Really, really. I don't smell. And it's really effective. You see, I've only gone through half of the capacity of my weapon. So let's get in another 50 here. And let's just go to town. And it's the weapon that really, really suits itself for big hordes. Or when you really want to make sure that you don't have to reload in the middle of fighting a bunch of zombies. So that was an extra... 50 zombies that I took out with one magazine. I mean, it's just, if you don't like this one, then I, I, I you might not have been really tried it out enough because it's awesome when you really need that firepower and you don't want to get killed because it's the best way to clear, well, clear the, the front of you because it doesn't really matter what you have. You need to clear, use the M60 again. It's the top two weapon in seven days to die. Oh. And I managed to kill all of them. Pew! One round left. Can I get the... Oh. Oh, that, that would have looked much cooler if I actually killed that vulture. But anyway, let's pretend I did. And coming in on number one is, perhaps surprisingly, what I would call the best weapon in seven days to die. Now, that was the Sledge Turret. And she died a little... Why did she die that easily? Why? She... Oh, she burned to death. Oh, no wonder. Let me see how much... Let's do that instead. Let's bash her. And you might think, well, that's not really powerful. All these bashes and she's barely dead. Well, that's true. But it's not really meant to be handheld, even though you can. It's really meant to be put down in front of you. And something like this. See, that zombie is not really going to make it here because the sledge turret is going to protect me. And, well... That's not super effective, is it? I mean, it's, it's bashing her, but what if there are a lot of them out there? 
I mean, what's good? Well, if you follow my channel, then you know that there are some excellent ways to actually use the sledge turret. And the reason I would say the sledge turret is the best weapon in seven days to die is because, let me find and see if I can find my base is over here. This is my wizard's tower. And even though this one is sort of an upgraded one uh, from uh, because I put it to uh, 64 concurrent zombies, what's really awesome about the sledge turret is that it's the only only weapon in the game that can protect you from pretty much any horde in the game without well without doing anything you can literally just sit back and idle the whole horde while your sledge turret is basically taking care of them over and over and over again and well that's about it you've pretty much almost beaten the game because it works by itself. Now you might say that, hey, the junk turret will shoot by itself, and that is correct. However, that one runs out of ammo as well. The sledge turret is the turret that just will keep on going, sort of like Thomas the Train, right? It will never run out of fuel. It will never stop fighting until, well, maybe if they keep vomiting at it and it takes a lot of uh, durability damage that way. But if you're hiding behind, uh, you know, by walls or something, th there's no way the zombies are going to get through. And I'm going to show you here. Let me... Uh, bring in some of these ones and let me make sure I have uh, just something to so I'm gonna stand up here I'm going to detach the camera and you'll see here so if you build a base the proper way something like my witch's tower you see it takes them a quite a long time to run around here you know I'm, you know I'm, I'm waiting a while here and uh, maybe I should have spawned them further up let's do that just to make sure that they don't uh, lose scent of it because it can take them such a long time to make their way up that they actually lose track of uh, that I'm upstairs because uh, they have about 60 seconds by default now the first one comes up here you see the rest of them are just slow and come on there bash down and she's the only one who's made it up and I haven't really done anything except just standing still let's do second one we'll get a third one third one is coming and then we have number four five six here four five and is she falling no number six and now she's on fire so I'm just standing here and I can do this during a Blood Moon Order. I've actually run this base through a insane difficulty, 64 concurrent, really high game stage horde, and it had no problems at all. Well, actually, it had a little bit of damage and everything because it wasn't really meant to tackle that kind of hordes, but because it's the only, only weapon in the game that can effectively, well, win you the game, or at least survive, I would really call this my top one. Now, it doesn't give you a lot of experience. It will give you experience if it actually kills something, which will happen eventually, because it deals about 40 damage every time it bashes, plus some of the fire damage. But because it keeps you alive, well, at least you can fight another day. And to me, that's something that is really important. And you don't actually need something as elaborate as, as this, but this is something if you want to have a really, really tough horde. But even a very straightforward small wizard tower will keep you alive early, mid, and late game. Pretty much the only potential could be demolishers. But if you place these one properly, if I place them even actually, you can place them even better of having them one down and they'll sort of bash upwards and they won't trigger demolishers that way. And you're going to be pretty much super 100% safe except maybe vultures you might have to kill them somehow but uh, for the danger of a blood moon horde with the sledge chart sorry you you know I, I i think it's to the point where the fun pimps might end up actually nerfing them because they're almost too good in this use so that is my top five we have the pistol number five we have the auto shotgun at number four we have the pipe bomb let's see can i throw one maybe i can't yeah, I can. Pipe bomb at number three. We have the light machine gun, M60 at number two, and the sledge turret at number one. See, I'm just standing there. There's no other weapon that can accomplish this, not in seven days to die. And that's why I think these are my top five weapons. Disagree? Agree? What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you think there are some other weapons out there, let me know what they are and why. Give me a rationale why they would suit better than my 1 to 5 here. And if you enjoyed this video, why not make sure you subscribe to my channel and you'll be notified if you hit that notification bell as well next time I publish a video, which is, well, maybe tomorrow, well, at least twice a week. See you next time. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. 
If you would like to join the Vedic community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.